Welcome back to the Typhoon Legacy channel, everybody. This is episode nine, and if you remember back to episode eight, we were just doing the finishing touches uh, on the Merlin before we took it out for a test run. As you can see right now, things didn't go exactly as planned, and if you have been watching us on social media, I shared a picture that was a little bit daunting, and I'll do my best to explain what happened here. I don't think it's ever a really good idea to announce the exact day that you're going to go out and you're going to do a test run um, just because anything can pop up and slow you down, put you back a day or a week or a month, who knows. So uh, we didn't do that, but quite literally we had the, uh, the Merlin and its associated trailer here hooked up to the tractor and we were towing it out the door. Before we did that, um, Rob was running a pressure test on our, uh, our oil priming system just to get things uh, ready to go and we lost oil pressure. So oil pressure is a rather important thing when you go to start one of these bad boys. And um, what had happened is the, the pump continued to work. This is our electric priming pump. It continued to work, oil pressure dropped off and the pump sped up. Uh, we cracked a fitting just above the, uh, on the other side of the engine. Uh, just above the entrance where our priming pump goes into and water came out of it. So what had been happening was uh, over time since we filled the cooling, filled the cooling system, the uh, cooling system had drained down into the oil system. Uh, that fitting released 99% water in the oil system. Um, neither Rob or I were impressed with it. <laughs> uh, we investigated further. We took the oil filter off. It was uh, it's about a two liter capacity in the oil filter. It was all water. Um, and we found further on down the line, right down through into the tank was also uh, filled with quite a bit of water. So the bad news with that is that uh, our oil priming tests and the speeding up of that oil priming pump actually meant that we were pumping oil, or sorry, pumping water into our engine, which is not good. As soon as we realized this, we stopped playing with anything and uh, drained as much water out of the system as possible. Um, the social media image that I shared with the, all the uh, absorball on the ground, which is actual, actually kitty litter. And actually, it, the box is over here. It's simply perfect kitty litter. Oh, yes, simply perfect scoopable cat litter. So there's a plug for those guys. They should send us a check. It would really help. Anyway, back to the Merlin. Um, we did everything we could to drain it. We were actually pretty diligent. To, I should say Rob was very diligent with our drain pans and catching it. We had a... a uh, mixed fluid of approximately 60 liters of uh, oil and coolant mixed that were coming out of it and we were cracking open every fitting we could possibly get at to uh, to drain the um, specifically the water out of the system uh, once that was done at the end of the day we felt pretty good leaving it uh, we I continued on with it and uh, pressure tested the system and um, ended up overflowing one of the drain pans. So ultimately the, the big mess that you see in this image is actually overflow from the pans and just the sheer capacity of what we had and then adding pressure to that uh, didn't help either. At that point we knew that we had a leak somewhere between the cooling system and the oil system and uh, neither of us were aware that on these early Merlins there's a drain tube that runs down through the cylinder block it's an oil drain tube that drains the rocker assembly or the oil that's pumped up to the rocker assembly in the camshaft uh, that just drains it through gravity down into the crankcase again. And uh, we, we knew these drain tubes were there. I, I personally assumed that they were actually uh, cast into the blocks during manufacture, but they're not. Uh, it's a brass drain tube of approximately three quarters of an inch in diameter, and it runs down through the block, but it passes through the cooling jacket. So uh, we were still investigating what was going on and uh, until Rob was there uh, back at the shop for the next time, I continued to play with it a little bit. I pressurized our cooling system, uh, reconnected all our fittings and pressurized our cooling system with about five PSI of air pressure and found that lo and behold, there was an air leak.
You'll notice through these oil drain tubes pass our uh, cylinder block studs. So there's a series of these, they pass through, the oil's allowed to drip down. It actually protects the studs quite well. Um, but you can see, and here in this case, that we had quite a substantial leak on one tube. Uh, we're, we're fairly fortunate that it was isolated to one, but it's something that we potentially could have caught if we would have done this early on. So shame on us, but uh, here we are. <laughs> Armed with knowledge of the general location of the leak and uh, satisfaction that there were no further leaks beyond that, uh, it was time to start looking at disassembling the engine so that we can find the specific cause of the leak and uh, impart a repair on our cylinder block. We reached out to Peter Grieve in the UK who has been an amazing help with this. Uh, one thing is that the cylinder blocks, the uh, Merlin is a 60 degree V engine and the cylinder blocks are 30 degrees off center. And to do this on the trailer without tipping the trailer, the cylinder block has to be lifted off uh, while maintaining that 30 degree angle. So Peter very, very kindly sent us the drawing that he'd done for a plate that has the correct center of gravity and the correct moment to lift the cylinder block off nice and straight and um, or I shouldn't say straight at 30 degrees and it worked absolutely beautifully so it was a flawless procedure it was actually quite straightforward and now we've got this off um, as we go through this engine we're going through and everything is getting sprayed down religiously with penetrating oil and uh, preservative just to make sure that any little tiny pockets of water are being captured. We're still looking at a process to uh, properly flush the entire system. Um, before anything was disassembled it was all plugged back up and we did pump fresh oil through everything. Uh, but that's not to say there's not minute pockets of water that we intend to capture. So this is the top of the oil drain tube that goes down through the water jacket that we found to be leaking. There is no damage uh, that we could see on the studs, they're all in excellent condition. But what we've got to do is take the brass tube out that's in there. And to do that we have to remove this collar. So the collar was held in with a pin, the pin's been removed, and we don't have the proper um, Rolls-Royce Merlin tool to actually pull that. So we devised a system with this strange size metric bolt and a uh, collar removal beaten onto it and a ratchet wrench so it fits in there nicely won't cause any damage and uh, pulls them out nicely so we'll be able to get in there and get that tube out and there you can see is the brass tube that gets swaged in there and that's what uh, we've been able to find so far as it looks like it was a installation error and it was uh, over compressed, over swaged and caused a leak. So we're going to remove it and find out exactly where it is. But there's indications of a crack and deformation on the inside of the tube itself. So the drain tubes here are brass and they're designed to be pulled out. And this one had an issue internally that we could see a big buckle going uh, off to the forward side. And we suspect that's where the leak was. Um, so we designed a puller similar, albeit more crude than the original one where it actually slides from the back of the tube and pulls it out the top of the head or the cylinder block. Uh, the problem was that uh, with the existing buckle on the inside it just tightened up the buckle and uh, we're now stuck with the, uh, the tube halfway and halfway out and that buckle preventing it from coming all the way out. So we'll put the puller aside for now and um, what I'm thinking is that if I can cut the tube off that we have here. We have a drift on the back that's supporting it. We'll push it back a little bit and I'm gonna do what I practiced here on this end with needle nose pliers and buckle it in to get rid of that um, bulge that's preventing it from sliding out. The problem with doing this is it also risks um, losing a component inside and if that's the case we're to the point where we have to pull the cylinder liner. So this is kind of our last ditch effort to uh, get all of this out without having to do any of that.
What I've learned so far uh, from the experts like Peter Grieve on this uh, type of removal is that they're normally fairly tedious. Uh, perhaps this one's more tedious because the, the tube is actually fully sound. There's not a lot of corrosion that weaken it and it's got that bulge on it. Um, but we're going to go back uh, piece by piece, slowly bringing it out, drawing the tube through and cutting it off, drawing it through, cutting it off. Uh, so that we don't cause any damage to anything. It looks like everything is going to go well, uh, locked on wood, cardboard kind of like wood. Um, and I'll get that all finished up. Obviously my, uh, my mess has uh, gone beyond covering the springs with the, uh, the shop rags that I've got here. So I've got quite a bit of cleanup to do. But uh, good news is we're basically ordering repla replacement parts. Uh, Peter himself has some, uh, some tubes for us and we're going to get those on their way while we finish up with uh, cleanup on the engine, making sure that it's good to go as we reassemble. So this is a bit of a setback for us. Rob and I were both hoping to have the engine running and uh, purring like a kitten by now, and that's not happening. So what I've done is I've actually gone, I've talked to the other partners that we're working with with regard to this Merlin, and we're gonna announce uh, through video with some photos and some really good detailed information exactly why the Merlin is so important to the airworthy rebuild of a Hawker Typhoon. JP-843 specifically, an aircraft that flew with a Napier Sabre and had nothing to do with the Rolls-Royce Merlin. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm putting together another video. It's going to obviously launch first on our paid subscription channel. So please, if you can uh, support us, head over there for a couple bucks a month. You'll know exactly what it is. You'll get some good pictures and all that good stuff. And hopefully it'll help put some minds at ease while we finish up the Merlin. Another good little bit of news is that um, because the fabrication on this engine is really... Uh, complete now, we're just in, a, in the stage of a mechanical repair, I'm going to start heading back towards Typhoon work. So I'll get back on that rear monocoque, or sorry, forward monocoque section, and we'll get some Typhoon videos coming out, hopefully in the fairly near future. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I've got to get back on this thing, and uh, we'll get the Merlin put back together. All will be uh, told very shortly, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Cheers.